Eric O'Keefe for the Land Report here in Des Moines at the Event Center at the 15th Annual Land Investment Expo, where we're going to debut the Land Report 100 tomorrow. It is a fascinating study for us. We've done it every year since we launched, and this year's is particularly interesting because for the first time in quite some time, we have a landowner who made his fortune off the land. Stay tuned and learn how Red Emerson, with his father, with his sons, and with his grandsons, created a 2.33 million acre timberland empire. It is time now to debut the Land Report 100, our annual look at America's largest landowners. Um, my publisher, Eddie Ryder, is somewhere back in the netherworld, about 18 or 20 tables back there. 15, 16 years ago when we had a concept for this magazine, we both recognized that land was an underappreciated asset. Uh, it wasn't recognized effectively in the business press and in the general press. And so we decided to piece together a publication that celebrated landowners. And uh, just importantly, just as importantly, one of the things that we did that was extremely effective was we came right out of the gate with a, the, 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 the most enticing opportunity known to man. And in media, that's called a list. And our list was the Land Report 100, a gathering of the largest landowners in the United States, the first annual compilation. And uh, it came out, as you can see from that cover, that is April of 2007. By April 25th, we were first page in the business section of the Wall Street Journal and uh, being featured in terms of the asset class as well as the individuals who were affiliated and associated with it. Many of them are household names. The Jeff Bezos, the Ted Turners, uh, the Hearst Corporation. But many of them have been long-term family-run operations that were below the radar. And so we have developed a series of studies on an annual basis, and we reveal it now at the Land Investment Expo. One of the reasons it got off to such a strong start was, of course, America's largest landowner in 2007 and 2008 and 2009 was Robert Edward Turner III. And his approach to owning land is unlike anyone anywhere in the United States. Uh, Ted was caught hunting on someone's property when he was about 10 years old. And after he got taken downtown and chastised by the court, he vowed he would one day own enough land that he could hunt anywhere he liked. That was two million acres ago. And he does things on his land that no one comes remotely close to doing. He is single-handedly rehabilitated. That's the Bolson tortoise the largest of North America's five tortoises. He owns America's, in fact, the world's largest herd of bison, 45,000 head. That's on his Flying D Ranch in Montana. And I, I bring up that ranch because when he bought it in 1989, he paid what was considered a staggering price. $21,200,000 an acre. In fact, it was a one-time showing deal or no deal offer. Last year, a $136 million ranch, which is smaller than the Flying D, came to market the first week of May, and it was under contract 24 hours later. That's what kind of thinking around the corner Ted Turner is capable of. His land investments have increased enormously but his ability to enjoy his land and share it with his colleagues has been one of his greatest joys. That's John Malone. Everybody knows John from uh, Liberty Media. He's the chairman of Liberty Media. He and Ted were cable pioneers together back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. You should hear John talk about Ted. John is just absolutely amazed at Ted's forward thinking, and John is a nuts and bolts kind of guy, but when Ted introduced him to his lands and started taking him to different properties, John started buying land for himself. That wonderful piece of property there, the Bell Ranch in New Mexico, was marketed and brokered by our friend Pat Bates. 
John Malone bought it in 2010 after a five-year marketing effort. The following year, he bought a million acres in Maine and in New Hampshire, and that made him America's largest landowner at the time with 2.1 million acres. Another major transaction I'd like to highlight during the, the Land Report 100's tenure was obviously the sale of the Wagner Ranch, which was marketed by Sam Middleton and Bernie Utrecht, and uh, Stan Kroenke's representative was Joel Ledbetter. This is a ranch that went to market for $725 million, half a million acres, founded in 1849, never changed hands until 2016 and that transaction. By 2017, people were beginning to pay attention to land as an asset class. And I say that because we started getting calls from the Wall Street Journal, the Washington Post, the New York Times. This is a great Washington Post graphic tracking the growth of ownership by America's largest landowners in the 10-year span from our initial land report 100 to 2017, an increase of 50% from 27 million to 40 million acres, or obviously 400,000 acres per landowner. Last year, of course, we made headlines by debuting the news that Bill Gates is America, America's largest private landowner with, pardon me, private farmland owner with 242,000 acres of farmland and a total of almost 269,000 acres nationwide, spread out over 19 states. You can see that study that we did, and one of the most interesting aspects, Bill was uh, at a Reddit conference online, and one of the uh, users asked him why he bought so much land, and his answer was quite simple. My investment team did it. The idea that it was being looked at from strictly the standpoint of a solid investment is one of the most interesting aspects of why we keep on seeing new interest from outside into land itself. The big news this year with Bill Gates was not what he bought, but what he didn't buy. He was in the running, one of his investment companies was in the running to buy Easter Day Farms and Ranch. Ranches, uh, the property went for $209 million to Farmland Reserve. Second, uh, the runner-up bid was $208 million by a Bill Gates entity. This was an enormous, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the fact that there was a ghost cattle operation being run in Washington and Oregon where hundreds of thousands of non-existent cattle were bought, fed, finished, processed, and sold. Tyson Foods and others eventually lodged a suit for $249 million. That's why Easter Day Farms and Ranches was sold in bankruptcy court. Last but not least, I want to go into this individual here, the one and only Red Emerson. Red's story is the headline story of our winter issue. He is America's newest, largest landowner with 2.33 million acres of timberland in California, in Washington, and in Oregon. The joke around the office is that 92-year-old Red is slowing down a, a step or two. He only shows up on Sundays a couple of times a week now at the office. We all know what it's like to be around someone who is that kind of nonstop drive. And he is a born timber man. It's amazing to see what he's been able to do from the forestry standpoint, from the milling standpoint, and from the marketing standpoint. Those are his two sons, to his right, Mark, to his left, George. They are an incredible team that works together and that, uh, that will definitely, I believe, expand their holdings um, from 2.33 to additional acreage. They are definitely looking for acquisitions and they definitely have a very strong business model with excellent fundamentals in place. One of the things that Everybody here knows Miriam just brought it out. Uh, we saw it with American farm landowner. The idea of giving back and developing the next generations. That is the Hall of Fame at the Emerson's Sierra Pacific Industries headquarters. Since its inception in 1979 by Red's original partner, his father, it has given away nearly $34 million to community programs and scholarships in the areas 
where it has its timberland. And that's Red's daughter, Carolyn. She runs the foundation. Her mother ran it before her, her grandfather before her. Long story short, here is the Land Report 100 for 2021, sponsored by Hayden Outdoors, the Emerson family, with 2.33 million acres. John Malone, number two, at 2.2 million acres. The Reed family, based in Oregon, at 2.1 million acres. Ted Turner, still holding strong at 2 million acres. And Stan Kroenke, whose Kroenke Ranches acquired the Wagner Ranch at 1.627 million acres. If you would like a copy of our issue, please just email us your, your name, your email address, your mailing address to expo at Land Report. We'll have one sent to you ASAP. Glad to do that. Glad to share this story. And thank you for your time and your listening. One of the things that I've been asked most often today about creating the Land Report 100 is how do we keep doing it? How do we keep improving? How have we gone from 27 million acres to now 42 million acres in the top 100 landowners? And the answer is simple. Number one, we have technology on our side now. Thanks to our work with Acre Value, we're able to track down to the parcel those landowners that we've correctly identified. It's a huge leap forward for our team and it's paid off major dividends. Secondly, we've seen so many new entrants into the Land Report 100. People buying huge tracts of land. Take, for instance, Thomas Petterfee, buying 561,000 acres in North Florida. That's one of the ways it's increased, and that's one of the ways it's grown. And last but not least, we've gotten better at what we do. That's important for anyone in any industry.